The people of Ottawa don't deserve to be harassed in their own neighbourhoods. They don't deserve to be confronted with the inherent violence of a swastika flying on a street corner or a Confederate flag. Hmm. All right, so here's wow. the here's I can the hardly even look at him. Here's, here's the first question. How can discourse in a great democracy have become so polarized that Jordan Peterson and the Prime Minister look at exactly the same set of events and come to opposite conclusions about them? Well, he's lying, and I'm not. So that's a big part of the, that's a big part of the issue. I don't believe that he ever says a word that's true from what I've been able to observe. It's all stage acting. He's crafted a persona. He has a particular instrumental goal in mind, and everything is subordinated to serve that. And Why? So, What's the motivation? Uh, the same motivation that generally, that's generally typical of people who are narcissistic, which is to uh, be accredited with moral virtue in the absence of the work necessary to actually attain it. All right. From He's playing a role. From you know, the swastika yeah. thing, it's like really it's just about Canadians, really, we're going to be worried about Nazis in Canada. Because I had protests, for example, where people accused me of attracting Nazis. First of all, that just isn't a thing in Canada. There isn't a Nazi tradition. And I don't know anyone in Canada who's ever met anyone who's met someone who was Canadian who, and who was a Nazi. And so that's just a non-starter. And so when that sort of thing gets dragged into the conversation, Right off the bat, you know, the Canadians shouldn't be subjected to the inherent violence of a swastika. First of all, it's not even obvious what that swastika was doing there. There's, a, there's reasonable evidence to suggest that the person who was waving it was either a plant or someone who was making the comment that that was what was characteristic of the government, mm. not of what they believed. Now, no one knows because the story around that event is messy and... Uh, it's not like there were credible journalists who were going in there to investigate thoroughly. But to use that uh, and the Confederate, the Confederate flag issue is exactly the same thing. You know, the story in Canada, the, the, our Prime Minister implemented the Emergencies Act, and so the question was why? And so I went on Twitter when this was trending and read at least 5,000 Twitter comments to try to get a sense. These were people who were supporting Trudeau in his application of the Emergencies Act. And I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what do they believe is happening? And the story seemed to be, and this is as far as I can tell, and maybe I'm wrong, mm -hmm. uh, the story was something like, make America great again, conservative Republicans on the, you know, pretty far right, were attempting to destabilize Canadian democracy. And so my question was, well, what makes you think they care, first of all, about Canada and its democracy? And second, why in the world would they possibly do that? You need a motive for a crime like that. And that was at the same time the CBC was insisting, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is subsidized by the Liberals to the tune of $1.2 billion a year, was insisting that most of the money that the truckers raised was foreign financed. If right. it wasn't the bloody Russians, then it was the American Conservatives. And so that all turned out to be a complete lie. And so, fine, it's uh, Republican right-wingers trying to destabilize Canadian democracy. Why? No one has an answer for that, because what's in it for them? And then, okay, three days later, the Emergency Act was lifted. And I thought, okay, now what are they going to make of that? What could the possibly be the rationale for that? And the rationale was, well, that just shows you how effective he was. We had this coup ready to go that was financed by Americans, apparently, and our Prime Minister acted so forthrightly that we only needed to be under the strictures of the Emergency Act for three days. It's like, okay, I don't even know what sort of world I exist in where those things are happening. Oh. So, and then Canadians, why do Canadians buy this to the degree they do? And I think, they're faced with a hard choice, because in my country, for 150 years, you could trust the basic institutions. You could trust the government. It didn't matter what political party was running it. You could trust the political parties, right from the socialists over to the conservatives. None of that's true now, and so Canadians are asked to make a hard choice, or were in the truckers' convoy uh, situation, and the choice was, well, either all your institutions are almost irretrievably corrupt, or 
the truckers were financed by like right-wing Republican Americans well both of those are preposterous you might as well take the one that's least disruptive to your entire sense of security you know and you can be like my Prime Minister and you can say well I really admire the Chinese Communist Party because when it comes to environmental issues they get things done and I think I, I couldn't begin to tell you how many things are wrong with that statement it would take like 15 years to tell you why you're uh, uh, an inexcusably narcissistic idiot but we can start like simply if you know what you're doing and you have power if you know what you're doing maybe you can be more efficient in your exercise of in your control over movement towards that goal let's just assume for a minute that you do know what you're doing what about when you don't know what you're doing how about then where do you turn because what that means is your ideology failed you and do, do you have a mechanism for for operating when you don't know what you're doing well no because we always know what we're doing because we're totalitarian and we have a complete theory of everything and don't say anything to the contrary or else we've got it all wrapped up yeah except when you don't and so what do we do in free societies when we don't know what we're doing well we let people talk and out of that babble, out of that noise, and American culture is particularly remarkable in this regard you have this immense diversity of opinions, most of which are completely useless and some of which are absolutely redemptive and one of the things that's so remarkable as a Canadian observing your culture in particular is that you know, you guys veer off in weird directions fairly frequently and things look pretty unstable and then there's some glimmer of hope somewhere that bursts forward in, in a whole new mode of adaptation and away you go again and that just happens over and over and over and that's a consequence of real diversity, of real diversity and it's definitely a consequence of like freedom of association and freedom of speech because it enables all that